Well, hello there. How are you? Um, welcome to the video. I hope everybody is having a great day. Uh, I don't ever want to bullshit you guys. So I'll tell you that today has not been stellar. There were some uh, things that kind of threw me off a little bit, but there were also some really cool things that happened. So uh, much like we discussed a few videos back, uh, you got to be that prize fighter. When stuff knocks you down, you got to get back up. You got to keep going. So I'm going to try to focus on the good stuff and not the stuff that was not so good. Um, we have a promotion. We being me. <laughs> the royal we, um, doing a promotion that I wanted to let you guys know about, and I hope that it'll sound like it's something exciting for you. Uh, as you know, I have uh, written a book called The Queen's Road, which is a space opera, kind of an urban space opera. It's got a lot of components of, of contemporary life thrown in there, along with all this intergalactic shenanigans. And uh, the book came out as an audible audiobook original last year at Christmas time. Um, and just a f in the last you know month or so back in June, we got to release it as a um, hardcover and paperback and ebook through the wonderful people at Falstaff Books. They are awesome. You should check out their whole catalog. So I am doing a promotion right now on the audiobook from Audible. If you purchase the Queen's Road audiobook from Audible, you will be in the running for a hardcover copy of the Queen's Road from Falstaff Books, provided by me. And I'm even gonna go ahead and sign it for you. I'll sign it any way you want me to. I'll make it out to whoever you want. If you want me to put, you know, dear eBay auction winner number 723, I'll do that. Whatever you want to do, however you want it, you know, uh, want it uh, made out to to cash, you know, what, what, however you want me to write it, the dedication or write in the book, I will. So all you got to do to have a chance of winning a copy is you jump over here to Amazon. You hop over to the, uh, right here's the page, Queen's Road Audible Audiobook, and you pick that puppy up. And the fellow who does the narration, uh, Kaleo Griffin, Griffith, is amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed with him. Uh, got to talk to him some uh, after the book came out, and uh, he's a really cool guy been very supportive of the book and I think he had a lot of fun doing it. A lot of times when you're doing narration stuff, you don't get to do a lot of different things. But in this, he was talking like an alien that looks like a kind of a silver burbling water fountain. And he got to be a um, giant tree vampire monster aliens and all kinds of fun stuff. So got to be a dude with some like fungus on his face. So, you know, not your usual fare. <laughs> so please pick it up. When you do, maybe do a screen capture or something like that to show me you bought it. And I will have the details for that up on the YouTube channel and the Patreon channel and my Facebook channels and my YouTube or my uh, Twitter. Whew, God, I think that's everything. Um, let's see. I wanted to talk about tonight um agents and this is a huge subject so believe me this is not the last word on agents you're going to get from me uh, i have a very good friend uh brian horn and brian is an attorney in richmond he uh messaged me because he has a friend who is looking to shop a manuscript and was asking me about how do you get an agent and there's a whole bunch of different schools of thought on agency um, I'm represented by uh, Lucianne Diver from the Knight Agency out of Atlanta. And uh, Lucianne has been my agent for most of my career. Uh, I sold Six Gun Tarot without an agent. Um, and I did the Star Trek 
story through Simon & Schuster um, without an agent. But after Six Gun, uh, Lucienne came on board and I have been so happy that we, we agreed to work together. Um, she has uh, made my life a whole lot better and helped me and my family. And she's a wonderful person. I consider her a very good friend. Now, that all being said, every person's journey through writing and through writing for a living is going to be different. There are some folks who have had bad experiences with agents, and there are bad agents out there. Um, one of the things I was going to mention right off the, top, off the bat is if you approach an agent, and the way you do that is you basically uh, the way I approached Lucienne was um, you, you kind of go looking for an agent that's a good fit for you. And there are different types. There are like large corporate agents that work for agencies that are you know, really huge. And they're kind of like sort of, you know, uh, you know, sort of high power sort of agencies. Those folks, um, you know, can make things happen in your career. However, when your career and, and everybody's career is going to kind of go up and down, up and down, when your career kind of goes low, those high power agents will a lot of times take a while to return your phone calls or not return them at all. So as long as you're the flavor of the week, those guys are happy. As long as you're producing at, at the level they want you to be producing at, uh, they, they will make things happen for you. I wanted an agent that I could have a kind of a personal relationship with and trust and, and have a good rapport with. And that turned out to be Lucienne. And the Knight Agency is a very prestigious agency. They've got a lot of great clients and I'm really honored to be represented by them. Um, you can basically, you know, say you get your manuscript done and you've prettied it up and it's all ready to go and you now want to send it off to an agent to see if they can shop it for you. What you're, what you're paying for with an agent is someone who has friends and contacts, acquaintances in the industry. They can go, they know who to talk to, they have access. That's, that's basically part of what you're paying for is access. You hand them a manuscript and you say, hey, would you like to represent me? This is the manuscript I'm trying to shop around. And if they like what they see, and by the way, when you approach them, you're basically writing a cover letter to go with your manuscript. And you're gonna either email this off to them or mail it to them. Toot your horn, this is the time. If you have won prizes, if you have previous publishing credits, um, if you have you know, any particular expertise, like my manuscript is about uh, NASA and uh, I was in the astronaut training program, you know, stuff like that. Basically sell yourself, shop yourself. Why are you a good candidate for, uh, for being represented? And you, you sell your book a little, don't go overboard. You want this to be short and sweet because they get a lot of these and they're gonna read your stuff. So they're gonna know what they, if they like it or not. One of the things that's really cool about agents is you can also uh, send out multiple queries for agents. Remember when I was talking to you about manuscripts, like for novels, send them one publisher at a time, one publisher, wait to hear back, then send it to another publisher because it's kind of a industry faux pas to multiple submit like that because these people know each other and, and they may end up going, hey, we're both got the same manuscript and that can be a very awkward position, especially if both of them were thinking about, you know, making an offer to you. Different with agents. Agents, you can just canvas. You can send out a whole bunch of these packets and see what kind of response you get. You may get no response at all. You may get a kind of a, like a formal letter rejection kind of thing. Or you may, it may lead to an email or conversation. Um, so, it's a, a totally different way of going about it than when you are uh, shopping a manuscript. That all being said, um, the norm, uh, normal fee for an agent is 15%. If they broker a deal for you, if they sell a book, um, if they sell a series, whatever that is, uh, they get 15% of what you get. That includes your royalties. So when you start getting money in every six months, every three months, however your royalty scale works, they're gonna skim part of that off the top. And I have, in my experience, found that to be very much worth it. Lucy Han has gotten me a lot of work. 
and opened a lot of doors for me. She's the one who got me uh, in to do the Men in Black novel a couple of years. I guess it was like year before. Uh, it was last June. I think it was not this June, but last June it, uh, it came out. So that wouldn't have happened without her. So I, in my experience, it's worth it to have uh, an agent. Other writers are going to tell you something different. And that's why I wanted to show you this right here. Let's see here. If I can get up to it. Thank you. This is a gentleman I know whose name is Dean Wesley Smith. Dean is a writer and an author. He's an author and an editor. I met Dean through the Star Trek uh, book that I did for Simon & Schuster. Um, he was the editor on the Strange New Worlds anthology series. And he actually picked two of my stories. One of them showed up in Strange New Worlds 9. The other one made his, his list, but did not appear in Strange New Worlds 10. Um, Dean and his wife, who you'll have to forgive me, I am, her name is, is eluding me right this moment. I want to say Catherine something. But Dean and his wife are both huge proponents of going your own way. They do not believe in the agent system. And if you go to DeanWesleySmith.com, you can find all kinds of essays that he has written about that very subject. So when I was shopping around and thinking about an editor, basically Six Gantero did well, and I, I got a, you know a couple got some contacts from the publisher saying from my editor saying people want to know what you're interested in doing next. So I had you know I had a, had a kind of a window. Uh, so I started asking my other writer friends, and uh, you know many people had agents. As a matter of fact, many of the people that I asked about who would be a good agent mentioned Lucianne. So she has an you know, excellent rep reputation with a lot of people that I uh, know, like, and respect. Uh, Dean, uh, when I reached out to him, uh, he was more like, you know, I don't really believe in the agent system. Uh, here's why. Here's some of my stuff I've written about that. So, you know, this is a big decision. And uh, it is a relationship. You're, you're developing a relationship with someone that's going to have an impact on your career and on your family and on, on, on your money. So it's worth taking the time and the energy to figure out how you want to do that. So this is one place I would suggest. It's DeanWesleySmith.com. Uh, there's also, this has been kind of interesting, um, Poets and Writers uh, is a website. It's pw.org, Poets and Writers. Uh, provides a lot of resources for, shockingly enough, poets and writers. And one of the things that they have is uh, they actually have like a database for agents. So for example, uh, Brian was asking about his friend. His friend is not writing the same kind of stuff that I'm writing. Um, if you go to somewhere like Poets and Writers, uh, you can click on their database and enter in, uh, I'm writing you know, a historical novel, or I'm writing a political novel, or not even a novel, maybe just a book you know, nonfiction, and it should be able to provide you with some names and, and locations. Now, just truth in advertising, a lot of these writing sites, it, it's, it's for pay. So it could be quite possible that the agents who show up on the Poet and Writer's uh, search engine may have paid to be there. Just, I don't know. I, I do not know uh, one way or the other. But I want you to be aware of that. I want you to go in with your eyes wide open. You can also just simply do a Google search under literary agents and then write the genre, type in the genre that you're talking about. Horror, science fiction, fantasy, urban fantasy, romance, detective fiction. And it should give you some, some directions. Some agencies will take a whole bunch of stuff. They take a whole bunch of different genres. Other uh, agents specialize in one particular genre. Uh, some of the big corporate um, agents really are more about, I think, more about the, the, the writer, the author, than the genre. But they also, uh, one, one thing that you know, we can talk, talk about another day, but you know, once you kind of get locked into a brand, um, once your name is associated with science fiction or horror or urban fantasy, it can sometimes be difficult to break out of that and write something different. And I 
have always been kind of all over the place. I like writing a bunch of different genres and sometimes that is easier to do than other times. So that's something to be aware of. And we can talk about that some more too, because you can do things like you can write under a different name, have a pseudonym for the detective fiction, right? And then have a different pseudonym for the romance you write, have another pseudonym for the smut that you write. So uh, that is an option, but poet, poets and writers, you wanna check them out. Also, this has been a site that has almost kind of legendary, and I highly recommend you check this out. It's called Writer Beware. And Writer Beware, um, is I'm trying to remember the name of the author who started it. Uh, gosh, she was a Star Trek writer. She used to do workshops on writing at Dragon Con, and she was a hell of a lady. She passed away many years ago, but this was kind of a part of her legacy. Um, she started write, uh, Writer Beware, and um, it provides alerts for writers on publishers, agents, uh, issues with contracts maybe not being honored or uh, payments not being fulfilled. It's through the Science Fiction and Fantasy uh, Writers of America organization, which again, truth and advertising, I'm not a member of. I have considered joining that and the horror writers and maybe a couple other organizations. They all cost money, they all have dues every year. Um, if you are members of these organizations, you are eligible for certain awards, uh, to, to be nominated for certain awards that they, they provide. So uh, it is a business organization. You can, of course, write your, fee, write your dues off as a business expense, but it's still an expense. I would highly recommend everybody check out Writer Beware. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the scams and some of the stuff that's out there. Um, something I can tell you off the top of my head, I've mentioned this several times when I've done, um, done classes and things like that. If you approach an agent and they come back to you and say, I would love to pursue uh, your work and do something with you, work with you. I just need a reading fee of $2,000 or 300 bucks or whatever. It doesn't really matter. 25 cents, it doesn't matter. A reputable, legitimate agent will never charge something like that. So if you get something like that back from someone that you send a packet out to, that is a huge red flag. Run. Do not walk. Run in the other direction because that person is scamming you. Um, so, you know, an agent makes their money off of your talent. If you do well, the agent does well. It's in their best interest. To, to help you and support you and to um, want to kind of be your advocate. So um, that, is, that is like a red flag. Uh, agents are not going to charge you something coming in the front door. Now there are, like, there are these like meet and greet things you can do where you may pay to come in and sit down and have FaceTime with a couple of agents or something like that. And those can be legitimate. Um, I, I still don't know, you know how much I would... I would recommend that to you kind of coming in the front door, but those things do exist. They usually will be like at a, at a hotel or something like that. And it'll be like, you come in, you pay a fee to be there. You might sit through a, a seminar or a class or something like that. And then at some point you get to sit down and have maybe 10 or 15 minutes of FaceTime with an agent. That might be instructive and helpful. It might even lead to something. Um, just be aware that, you know, you're paying for this and there's probably like, you know, a hundred or 200 other people who are paying for it too. Uh, and that this may be something they do from city to city, town to town. So again, it's not exactly a scam, but, uh, the folks you're talking to are making money off of you, not based on your, your manuscript or your talent, they're making money off of you because you really want to get in front of, you get face to time with, a, with an agent. So uh, there is also a resource that I have found to be very helpful, uh, the Guide to Literary Agents. It comes out once a year. It's uh, a lot like the Publishers Marketplace books, which you may have seen, which I think they might be fully online now. I don't know if they still do a physical copy or not, but there is a book that comes out every year uh, that is a guide to literary agents. And I believe it's through the Publishers Marketplace organization. Uh, and I, I found them to be very helpful, very reputable kind of information. All right, I'm not saying 
do this, but I'm saying there have been times when I've sat down at a table, which is a little hard to do right now, like Barnes and Noble, and open up the publisher's uh, guide and uh, publisher's marketplace guide, which comes out every year, and flip through and say, okay, here's an agent or here's a publisher, and it'll give you all this information about them. They'll tell you how to get in touch with them. They'll tell. They actually usually have like a little paragraph written by the agent saying, I'm looking for this right now. I'm shopping around for this kind of material. Very helpful. So, you know, of course, you, you're, you're shelling out money, but again, these are business expenses. They're things that you may have to spend a little money uh, just to find your way around and find some people to contact in the business that can help you make, make it into a career. Like I said, you can browse at your bookstore or your library and see if they have these books there, and maybe you can access them that way, uh, a little bit cheaper. But, you know, the books I've bought uh, like this, they have been invaluable. So uh, not to mention, you know, the bookstores can use all the help you can get right now. So <laughs> you can give them right now. So that uh, might be a, a possible thing to, to consider. Let me see. I think that's all the stuff I wanted to kind of show you. Um, I am talking to my agent, Lucianne, to see if I can get her to come on the show, the show, on the channel sometime and talk a little bit about, she's also a writer, um, full-time writer, full-time agent. And uh, like I said, a wonderful person. So hopefully we can get her on to talk. Um, I'm also trying to set up some uh, guests with publishers and other writers. Um, I was talking to Anita Fireball, who is uh, the woman that I used to work with at the newspaper, um, at uh, uh, Main Street Publishing, I think was the name of the publishing firm that did all the community newspapers. Uh, and Anita was uh, mentioning that um, she would be interested in hearing uh, some information uh, from a woman's perspective on writing for a living. And also, you know, books uh, centered around uh, women writers. And that is a blind spot for me. <laughs> but I think it's an extremely valid and interesting uh, avenue for some for some shows, for some uh, videos. So I told her I was gonna to try to see if I could do, uh, what I could do about uh, addressing that. Some of the books, uh, besides On Writing by Stephen King, there are a couple other books that have been uh, very useful to me that have been written by women about writing. So maybe we can uh, get into some of those as we go down the road. Uh, I did offer Anita a chance to uh, come on the show and talk. And she is being very modest <laughs> and saying that maybe I might want to reach out to some other uh, female writers, which I, I probably will. I've, I've got a, a friends who, uh, who write uh, in all kinds of different genres um, who I think would be able to give a woman's perspective on, on the writing uh, business and on uh, doing it for a living. So we will pursue that. And if you have any suggestions on guests, anybody, please let me know. Uh, that's a, that's a very broad brush about agency and agents. Um, this probably went on way longer than I wanted it to, but I tried to keep it pithy. And, um, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, again, uh, ask you to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, please click on the bell for notifications. So the next time I put a video up and they let you know. Uh, please check out my Patreon page um, if you find something on there that interests you. I'm actually thinking about adding another tier somewhere between the top tier and the next to top tier. I, I'm wanting to do something with Discord and with Twitch. And I'm thinking about maybe trying to set up like an online role-playing game, like do a D&D &D game or a Star Trek game or you know something. And I would run it. And the folks who jump on that Patreon tier would get to play. And if they bought like the highest level tier, they would get the highest level tier. And that would be one of the perks they would also get. So I don't know if there's any interest in that at all. And also, to be honest, it's, it's taking time away from writing. But it's fun. <laughs> and it's a nice way to get to meet the people who read my books and who maybe are into gaming, too. So let me know what you think about that. Is that something that interests you or that you might be interested in? Because I'm going to talk about gaming and comics and all kinds of other stuff on here. It's not always going to be about writing. Um, that's kind of my main focus. But let's be honest, you know, there are other things that are you know interesting. And you know, you can draw 
you know, so much inspiration from other sources, from other places. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, click on the notification bell. Uh, check out the Patreon page. And I will see you on the next video. I hope everyone has a great night and take care.